Hey guys, Chase Paul McCoy and our awesome guest Josh Boyce on today, episode 33 of In the Trenches. Uh, we're very excited about this episode. We've got a cool one for you. It is November. You've got Thanksgiving. You've got Christmas. The holiday season is upon us. So we're going to talk to you today about some of the misconceptions in our business when it comes to selling around the holiday time. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to get to Cole McCoy. Cole, what did we touch on last week for those that missed that they may want to jump back to episode 32 and check out? Yes. Last week, Chase, we talked about using reduced paid up as a strategy to um, put our clients in a better position if it's available. Um, This is what happens, the the type of situation that you would use where somebody says, I already have that taken care of. And it's something you could step into, um, help somebody better their situation, and ultimately close more deals. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you didn't check that episode out, make sure you jump in. You can just go right back to YouTube, check it out. It's, it was a good one. Uh, Call had the board behind him all fired up and it was just chock full of really good information, kind of breaking down how to do that. And we've got Josh Boyce on today with us, 200 K plus year producer. Uh, we're fired up to have him working with us. Uh, and we're going to talk about, as I mentioned, shorter days, you know, the misconceptions of, of selling around the holidays. And number one that comes up is the shorter days. I just have lack of light. Uh, there's just, oh, I don't know what to do. Cole, break down for us. You, you've you been doing this a while. Uh, you kick it off. Tell us a little bit about the, this misconception. Yeah, for sure. So this is something I've heard, oh, my gosh, my whole career. I remember when I first started in this business, and I, I won't name companies or anything, but the way we set our appointments was we would start at 3 o'clock and go every hour on the hour until you know we'd set our last one between 9 and 9.30. So we I kind of grew up into the business with this mentality of it doesn't matter if it's dark or not. You just have to do what you have to do. And then when I transitioned to final expense, I heard, heard this a lot more when we're dealing with seniors, we're used to doing kind of mornings and afternoons. And when it got dark is kind of when people started going home. But um, you know, where I found a lot of my success, especially this time of year is, is actually, um, you know, obviously protect yourself and be smart, but there's the people are still there. And most of the time, if they're going to get mad at you for knocking on their door at six o'clock when it's dark, they probably weren't a good client anyway. So. Absolutely. And Josh, you, you've been around the game. You're no rookie. What's your approach when it comes to, you know, the, the holiday season and really just that, that shorter days, lack of light? Uh, do you change your schedule or are you just out there doing what you do? I just keep doing what I'm doing. I'll tell you, honestly, I, I actually kind of, I hate the cold, but on the other hand, I like the fact that it gets dark earlier. Um, if you door knock like I like to, it's a lot easier because you can tell if they're home. <laughs> Before I even pull in the driveway, I'll see lights. So awesome. it actually makes it a little easier on my end. That's actually a really good point. Uh, with it being darker, you're able to see if those lights are on a little bit better. And, uh, if, uh, kind of give you a little bit more of a signal if, if, somebody's, if, if somebody's there. Um, yeah. the, next, the next bullet point here, Cole, uh, no buyers around the holidays. There's a misconception that people just, they're not in the buying mood. Uh, we always get a chuckle. And I know when you and I were talking about building out content for this particular podcast, um, the misconception that they just don't buy during the holiday season is, is nothing more than a misconception. Fire away on us with, uh, with your thoughts. <laughs> well, uh, if you're easily offended, this might be a spot to kind of uh, just turn this off. But if you find yourself having that excuse that you might not be in the right business. Um, that's just a smoke screen. Unfortunately, when we fail, we, we need a reason why. And um, sometimes that's an easy thing to blame. Well, I started during the holidays or, you know, I was doing really well until it got dark and, and Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's came around. Um, if that's an excuse, you, you may not have been a good fit anyway. And so um, if, if you're going to let that excuse you know, prevent you from working a lot of other hours and, or, or making sales and letting that ruin your mindset. This, you, you may need to go back to a nine to five job. And, um, that's the first thing I will say. Um, but to completely obliterate that mentality, Chase, what I've found actually is, especially with a lot of our low income seniors, um, they're very excited to see people. No, not, not everybody. You're always going to get the grumpy old man or whatever, but um, you're going to have a lot of people uh, on the contrary that want to see you. They're, they're lonely old ladies. Maybe they don't see their family. Maybe they don't have a lot of family and they're happy to have some company around the holidays. And so 
you're actually doing them a favor by just trying to come over and, and, and help them out. I mean, they, they genuinely want the company. So, I mean, I, I don't want to take um, Josh's thunder. I'm, I'm sure he's got a perspective on this too, but. Well, I mean, my, my thing is when you go out there, uh, you know, kind of mimicking what Cole was talking about. If you're going to find excuses, you're going to find excuses. Um, you might have to work a little harder, see a little bit more, you know, more folks, but. To be honest, I don't think so. I really think it. I think the biggest hangout for agents out there that are going into this season is that they too want to take time off, and rather than dedicating certain days, like I know in January I'm taking two weeks off, but I know for it, I'm planning for it. So it's okay that I'm going to take that time off because I'm already planning for it. I'm I'm amping up my efforts right now, seeing more people, getting more sales. Um, so I think more often than not, it's easier for an, a new agent to get sidetracked. Even an experienced agent, for that matter, can get sidetracked with, you know, what's going on at home with the family and stuff. As far as uh, seeing, you know, little old Miss Betty that, you know, Cole's right. They sometimes are lonely. Other times, you know, <laughs> insurance is an emotional sale, so they're going to buy off of emotion. And usually the emotion is protecting their family. Well, one better to do that than when all the family is around. And they're more keen to the fact that they are parents or grandparents. So really, really good points that both of you have made. And I want to kind of bring it full circle. Number one, we've been talking about before this, the lack of light. We're fortunate now to be in a period of this business and in this industry where we don't have to rely on an office to be open to conduct business, uh, a telephone interview process to be up and running and available to take our call with the e-app process and all the other things that we have at our disposal using technology, we can still take care of somebody later after hours. Um, and that's really, really unique. And then also both of you guys made a point that's really powerful regarding, um, you know, you want to have this preconceived notion that, oh, it's a holiday time. They don't want to see me. Um, maybe the last person was rude. You guys are right. Like at the end of the day, you can tell when you're in a situation, when you're making a sale and that client is talking more than you are, you know that more often than not. When they're talking more than you are, you've probably got really good rapport. You're probably definitely going to close that sale. Same thing in the situation in regards to when you visit with somebody, don't have a preconceived notion that they don't want you there. Go in and make, you may make somebody's day, their week, their month by going in and sitting, spending 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes with them because they don't have any family around. They don't get to see their family. Don't take that preconceived notion in that you're, you're bothering them or the house before speaks for everybody else that you've got on the list of, to see moving forward because it may make somebody's day and uh, you may help them out tremendously. So don't, don't go. Yeah. And something else too, Chase. Um, so there's this, there's this whole thing of, you know, well, what if you just genuinely, maybe you're a female in the business and you're working in the city or, you know, make sure I'm comfortable to, to, to be out in the dark and you are a hard worker. Like I don't want to diminish you at all. Um, but here, you know, here's maybe a solution is if you're a door knocker and you know, there are always those situations where you can't get them right then and there, they have something going on. Or if you're an appointment setter, set appointments, you know, on the hour at five, six, seven, eight o'clock. So that way they know you're coming and it's an easier solution. They'll have the light on for you. You'll kind of know where, what's happening. You can door knock during the day if you're willing to find a solution to um, the objection that you're giving yourself, there, there's definitely a lot of places that you can go. Uh, but that's something I, I didn't want to for, forget to mention because there are those weird situations where, yeah, maybe it's not the best neighborhood and nighttime is when all the sketchy stuff happens. Like I don't want to just gloss over that, but there are solutions if, if you want them. Absolutely. Well, and Go ahead. Actually, if I could, if I could piggyback off that too, if you are like, let's say you're 120 pound female and that is a legitimate concern at that point that humanizes you when you're calling and setting the appointment with little miss Betty. Hey, miss Betty. I'm, my name's Sarah. I'm 120 pounds. You know, I have a security code that I usually give out to my clients. Um, once I set the appointment for your safety and for mine, can, can you, is there anything you can tell me about your house that I can get straight to your door? You know, is there a well-lit area where I can park my black Nissan? You know, you can, that solidifies that appointment very quickly because you're concerned for your safety, which makes you very real. Absolutely. That's a good tip. I like that's that. Huge. Yeah, that's next one, kind of, this next one kind of goes along with similar to what we were talking about. I'm going to let you guys elaborate, but that just people are too busy. Nobody, you know, no buyers are in the holidays. They don't have any money, blah, blah, blah. This one's just, they're too busy. Like 
oh, they're on the road going to see their family. They're traveling. I personally have seen that they're still home. There's there's not this, you know, zombie apocalypse and nobody answers the door and it's a ghost town. Um, you guys have been doing this a long, long time. The misconception that people have got to be on the road, they've got to be traveling, they're just not going to be home, it's going to be a ghost town. Kill that for me. Real quick. Yeah, well, I mean, I think of the, the Christmas carol, it's the most wonderful time of the year, or maybe it's the holiday carol, I don't know. But we hear this song during the holidays, and there's something about Christmas, uh, whether you're a religious person or whether you just have a family tradition where you're around the people that you love, you're excited to um, give, you know, it's, it's a giving time of year where people are, they've kind of opened their hearts and minds up, um, you know, maybe where they wouldn't at other points in the year. And so the idea that people don't want to see you or they're too busy or they have this or that going on. Yeah. They might be busy at times. Um, but all day, every day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, you know, other than, you know, and, and, and let's be honest, let's, let's call it what it is like, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, New Year's Day. I mean, that. and honestly, I've sold policies on Christmas Eve before too. So um, I, I typically, I have my better months in, in, as far as production goes around December. I don't know what it is, um, but there's, there's a, a hope that a lot of people have um, it, where, where you don't typically see that other times of the year, at least not as much. And so, when you're in that kind of spirit of Christmas or whatever, I find that it actually makes these conversations a lot easier because um, people are already in the mindset, like Josh was saying earlier. And, and so that's, that's something that I actually don't find to be, um, to be an objection really. And it's, it's just, yeah, I, I think it's actually easier to sell during the holidays with, with that mindset for sure. What about you, Josh? What's your experience regarding that? Um, I found that I got to be a little bit more forceful. Um, it's not a matter of being pushy or nasty or arrogant at the door, but hey, you know what? We're really busy. We're about to head out. You know what? Not a problem. Chase, my job is just to meet with you for about five minutes. In fact, this time of season, I got about 40 more people I got to see a week. I don't have much more time than that, but let me get you checked off my list so we can both get on with our lives. And just push yourself right in the door. And if you're setting an appointment over the phone, um, this goes for any time of the year, not necessarily even just for Christmas time, but don't leave. Yeah, so what's your schedule look like tomorrow, Chase? Oh, I'm really busy. Okay, what do you got going on? Well, I got a doctor's appointment all day. <laughs> so it's not going to be an eight-hour appointment. So for them, it's a busy day because, you know, they got that and bingo. So it's a big day for them. But what they don't realize is there's a ton of time. So don't leave it to them. What do you got specifically going on tomorrow? Okay, you got your doctor's appointment. What time is that done? 11. Okay, what do you got after that? I should be home. Okay, until when? Well, I got to go to bingo at 6. Okay, so there's, you know, we got a few hours now. Great. I got a 2 o'clock and a 3 o'clock opening tomorrow. What time works best for you? And you give them the best of those two options. In our conversations after hours, Josh, about your day and how things are going and your approach, kind of picking your brain, getting to know you over, over the time we've known each other, you have a very um, – and this isn't a bad thing. We, I think you have you know, police officers in your family. I, I also um, – you have a very police officer approach to you know, how you're going about collecting information so that you can then make sure that you know, you're, you're delivering the info, you're getting the appointment, you're getting in front of them. I probably do. <laughs> I try not to hit the door like that, though. <laughs> when, I, when I say it, I meant like when you were just explaining this a moment ago, like you're doing a little bit more digging. And I've seen Cole do this as well. And they, they love Cole as a big teddy bear when they get a chance to meet him. They, want, they always hug him when he leaves. Um, you have a very – All that blubber. <laughs> they, they, with you, Josh, it's you're not taking – you know, any BS, you're not, t you're not just, you know, letting somebody run, run over you with an objection. Um, yeah. Do you mind kind of breaking down real quick the, the, the meticulous approach that you have uh, in terms of how you kind of go through finding that day, just kind of like you did a minute ago? As far as when I'm door knocking or on the phone, do you mean? Door knocking, just getting in front of them when they try and give you that rejection, that, uh, that rebuttal about, and just right now is not a good time. Well, I'll just say pretty much what I just said, you know, that I got a lot of folks I got to see. It's not a problem. 
takes me about five or so minutes. You guys, a quick spot. We sit down and I look right past them. Something I learned at a different company, but I look right past them if I'm really struggling to get them to let me in at a chair, anything, TV, I don't care. Something that looks like an object that I'm looking to go sit at. And then I look down at uncomfortably so, and I scrape my feet and I start to move forward and I won't look up until I start to see their feet move. And they usually do. I'd, I'd say nine. I'd, actually every time they always move. <laughs> I come right in and I sit down. That's awesome. I love it. Colt, let's talk about your approach a little bit compared to Josh's, uh, the similarities, the differences. Uh, how do you go about it when you kind of get that blowback at the door, that objection? I mean, so it's for me, it's all about the way that I'm phrasing it. Like when I have that card at the door, you know, hi, my name is Cole. I'm a state regulated benefits coordinator here in Jackson County. I got this little postcard you sent back in the mail in regards to the state regulated life insurance. Uh, I'm just required to go over this with you real quick. It only takes a couple minutes. Do I need to kick my shoes off? And at that point, I just kind of lean in. And usually they're going to they're gonna let you in. S similar principle, you're just kind of stepping into it. Um, it. You know, Every now and then you'll have somebody push back at you. But um, I'd say, look, Miss Mary, I, I have a lot of people to get to. I don't want to have to keep coming by and bugging you. If I can't help you. I'm out of your hair. Either way, it just takes a couple minutes. Do I need to kick my shoes off? And at that point, they're, you know, you're looking down, same thing. They're, they'll look at your shoes and they'll say, oh, no. And then you just, they let you in. Um, yeah, very rarely, if, if you have that approach, um, if, they have a, if they have a legitimate smoke screen, they'll tell you. And, um, but if it's just their BS of not wanting to see you for whatever reason, that's where they're just going to let you in. So, yeah, I, I actually like the way Josh does it. I'm, I'm learning as we're talking here. So. Well, and I could say this too, because I, I can already hear it now. Anybody that watches this, you're going to hear it. Some agent's going to be like, well, you're being really pushy with Miss Betty. No, I'm not. I'm just not rolling over. Miss Betty told yeah. you no and six other people before me. She's not telling me no because she filled this out. I paid good money to be here. My job is to help you. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's not that I'm being pushy or arrogant. It's just more confident than anything. And that's mm -hmm. the same thing Cole I'm listening to Cole's end of things. His is a little different, but it's the same thing. He creates an action that would indicate that I'm coming in. Do you mind if I take my shoes off? I look down and scrape my feet. It's whatever is most comfortable for you, but you're coming in is the point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and, and I think you have to have the mindset too, and, and this is something I'm sure we've talked about, but this is super important, especially this time of year. These folks have a perception about an insurance agent. Uh, who they are and what they do. And, and again, we're not going to throw companies under the bus, but they've dealt with these companies where um, maybe they buy a policy and they send somebody out every six, somebody out every six months and they just run them over and um, just add, add on more and add on more and add on more. Maybe they have, have a, they, they, they send a lead back and that lead has been resold five or six times to a bunch of different agents and they just keep having somebody come and they regret the day that they filled out that stupid card. And so they have a perception of who we are and what we do. But the reality is you're not some two-bit insurance salesman. Um, you paid to be in the big leagues. If you're running fresh direct mail lead, uh, leads, you're, you're in the big leagues. And so sometimes you have to overcome that perception of who you are, where you know, you're not just selling a one-size-fits-all product, quote-unquote. You're not just with one company. Um, you most of the time can do a service, especially if they already have a policy. And, um, there are all these things that where, where their perception isn't reality. And at the door, you have to tell yourself that you're not being pushy. You're just, you have to overcome this hurdle to actually do what's right for, for, for the client. And if you're not willing to push them a little bit, one, you're, you're setting money on fire, but two, you're, you're potentially leaving that client in a position that um, isn't what's best for them. And, you know, potentially that could be harmful if, if you want to look at it that way too. And so it's really just about mindset, especially during the holiday season, but really in sales, um, you have to believe in who you are and what you do. And you have to step into that situation saying, I'm the man, I'm the man for this job and I'm going to step in and I'm going to help Miss Mary put her in the best possible situation. And if you don't have that mindset, um, it is very difficult to make it because every single objection you get, it's just, you're going to feel like a, like a, a piece of hay in the wind. You're just going to, going to, going to, to, to be tossed back and forth to and fro, not knowing what's going on. There's no confidence and you're, you're going to fail. And so 
Um, if, if, if you're considering this pushing and it's something that you can never do, um, perhaps this isn't the right industry for you. I want to, I want to, I want to kind of piggyback on what both of you guys just touched on. Number one, I think you both will agree that what you just did overcoming the objection at the door to get in, that is not a seasonal approach. That is how you do it daily. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the whole point of this little exercise. <laughs> exactly. I, and that's why I want people to understand that this isn't, oh, this is their seasonal approach at the door. Now, the next thing that I want to touch on real quick that you both covered and you did a great job doing it is um, it's not pushy. How many times have you sat and had a conversation with your parents and they're just kind of set in their ways on something? Maybe they weren't aware. They didn't have a piece of information that could, you know, that could educate them on, on how to have a different perspective and, and understand how something works. You gave that to them. They were dead set in their ways. I'm not using that computer. I don't need this. I don't need that. And you showed them how it was going to make life easier, or you just gave them the information that they just didn't have before to make the right, right decision. Same thing. Our approach, I know for me, I'm not going to speak for you guys, um, but I know my approach is it's always like mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, treating them like family. So I don't, I don't talk to anybody in a home the, any different than I would if, if it wasn't a, a family member. And so I want to make sure that everybody out there tuning in is, though Josh may sound assertive, um, he's not pushy. He's treating it like it's mom or his dad that he's talking to, to help them understand. It literally only takes a few minutes. Go get that policy. Let's take a look and make sure you're in the best vehicle possible. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, I would, Chase. And then my big thing is, like, everybody that's in sales that's any good knows. What's the strongest close? Assumptive, right? Assumptive close. We were literally asking. So, <laughs> you're going to throw it out there. Yeah, so assumptive close. So if you're going to go, if you look at what we do, whether it's Cole, me, or Chris Smith, or any of these other guys, it's assumptive closing all the way through from the phone call or the door knock. I'm assuming you're going to let me in. You filled it out. Why wouldn't you let me in? I'm assuming that you're totally fine with me coming in and spending five minutes with you. It's just something to close right on down to, yeah, if you want to get your, uh, I just need a driver's license and avoid a check. And then I look down and I'm assuming you're going to grab it. It's, it's powerful. It's not it pushy. Powerful. powerful, not pushy. I love that. You just, you just made the phrase for this particular topic. Um, <laughs> next we're going to go to the no money. The no money is the biggest and probably the most used um, objection that comes across. I just don't have any money. You know, they, they, you think that they don't because they're spending money on, on Thanksgiving food, on Christmas presents for everybody. Let's first tackle now the misconception that they just have no money because it's the holiday time. Go ahead, Josh. Where are we getting at? At the door or actually in my presentation? At any point, when you're typically when you're face to face and you have the opportunity, just the misconception overall, Josh, that comes along with it's not a good time to sell right now because it's holiday time and they don't have any money. Well, sometimes I'll get a door and ironically, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. I get that sometimes and I just say, hey, you know, not, not a problem. My job is just to get you an agreement. I don't collect any money today. So that's quick and to the point and over. I'm, I'm over it and we're moving on. If I'm in the house and I'm giving the presentation and well, I give the, I give the same presentation every time I'm in the house. And for me, I find the best rebuttal is the one you don't have to use. So if I can kill that before it becomes an argument, you don't feel foolish for bringing it up and I don't have to come up with a rebuttal. So for Episode me, I always tell them, Sorry. <laughs> for me, every time I get there, <laughs> I talk to them about, Hey, you know what, Chase? Uh, all my clients are on SSI or disability. You probably make about what the rest of them make, 800 maybe $1,000 a month. Is that about right? Yes. And I wait for a response when they say, yeah, yeah. Actually, I make 1200 Oh, great. Not a problem. So my job is to help make sure this fits your budget and to make sure you understand this and it's going to genuinely protect your family. The only favor I ask is I sit down with about 10 to 15 people, sometimes more than that, um, every other day it seems like but if you can do me a favor just give me a straightforward yes or no thank you at the end of this are you comfortable telling me no if, the, if this isn't a good fit for you yes great all right so at the very end of this i'm going to make sure you understand it. i'm going to make sure it fits your budget do me a favor and just give me a straightforward yes or no and if it's i want to think about it i'm going to go ahead and consider that a no and move on okay no hard feelings but i just i got a job to do does does that sound fair enough for you 
and then I move on. At that point, I'm not going to have to come up with that rebuttal at the end. So your mindset, based off of what you just kind of threw out there to us, I love it, is essentially you have no preconceived notions. You're not out there thinking anybody does or does not. You're out working as if it's a normal day, correct? Correct. Mr. McCoy, what is your approach whenever you hear, because I know you do a lot of trainings with new agents as well. Uh, you're mentoring guys also out there producing at a high level. What's your approach to this, this stigma or this misconception that there's no money during the holiday time for our clientele? I mean, sometimes, well, I mean, I can just speak to folks that are near and dear to me in my life that um, when it comes to family, especially their grandbabies, they'll spend money they don't have. <laughs> um, it's, it sometimes is reality. And um, this is probably one of the only times I, I may change anything I say if it's around the holidays and it's, it's real. Now, again, um, I love what Josh shared because like that, that's how your approach should be pretty much wherever you're at. But um, when you, if it is legit Christmas thing, well, the first thing is they don't, they're not paying anything today. Um, you can set it up um, for the following month. So it's not really going to be until it's a January effective date. So, I mean, that's an easy one to overcome if that's something, but if it's just a smoke screen, the affordability thing, I completely agree, and I don't want to take away from or add to what Josh said because I thought it was perfect, where you're you're explaining that it's affordable and you're getting their buy-in um, right then and there. And, uh, again, I'll just to plug another episode that we've done, uh, I think it's number 30, Chase, where we talk about preemptively overcoming stuff. Um, if this is something that you're struggling with and you're constantly getting, I want to think about it, or some kind of objection at the end, and they're just not picking one, well, it's, you know, again, it's, it's something that you didn't overcome during your presentation. So um, I thought I, I really don't want to add on to what Josh said. I thought it was perfect. So let's lead into uh, getting rid of the misconception. Josh, you had something. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to throw one more thing in there that I want to think about it. I got that a lot in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. Ironically, I didn't get it in the very, very beginning because I wasn't smart enough to create this problem. <laughs> um, I think it's something that a lot of agents do. They, in the beginning, you're just – ignorant you don't you don't know what you don't know so your presentation is going to be very simple very easy to understand because you don't know much more you're just hoping and praying they're not going to take it to a deeper level that you don't have an answer for um, but once you start to get really good and you start to earn your wings and you know more about the industry I think you tend to accidentally verbally vomit too much information on these people thus creating the whole I need to think about it and you genuinely do create that problem I know I did. I was giving them too much information for the longest time, and I did not understand why I was getting, I want to think about it nonstop. And it was because I, when I actually recorded my presentation, I went back and listened to it. I'm like, I need to think about it. <laughs> so I can't imagine that Miss Betty's going to do much better than I did. So if you're getting that a lot, I would say maybe record yourself, show it to your upline, your mentor, listen to it yourself. Um, and see if you're putting too much information out there for them. Keep it stupid simple. People aren't going to buy if they're confused. That's good stuff right there. I love that. So when we get the don't have money, we get to that part of it. Cole, you've got a, a little item that you want to share with us called the Christmas clothes. Um, fire away, man. I'm interested to see what this is about. I, I wish it was original. I mean, it's not something that I, I mean, I'm not smart enough to come up with something like this, but luckily I can repeat it. So. Um, you know, if really it is a Christmas thing and folks are really worried about money and they're saying, well, I can't afford anything for, I was going to take me three months to recover from Christmas. You've heard that before. Um, this is where you want to go into something and just kind of paint a picture for them, you know, uh, and, and, and you, hopefully you would have built enough rapport to know their kids or grandkids names. Who are they buying presents for? Um, you, you know, and so you kind of phrase it something like this. Now, Miss Mary, you've told me that you, you love and care for your family and that's why you're going above and beyond to make sure that they have a Christmas that they can remember. Um, but let's be 100% honest here. Even those presents that you're buying for Johnny and Jill and, and Jimmy, those are all a little bit for you. In fact, they're probably more for you than they are for them. Now, before you get mad, don't get upset with me. But the joy that you get from watching them open open that present is – is worth every single penny, isn't it? And every time they'll say, well, yes, of course. Well, let, let me tell you something, Miss Mary. A life insurance 
policy is actually the most unselfish gift you could ever leave behind for your loved ones. Because when you're not around to watch them open it, they, they will be the most thankful they've ever been because you had the foresight to protect them in their greatest time of need. And so, look, I know this is going to be a sacrifice. You know, maybe you'll have to cut out $10 per grandkid this Christmas. But here's the thing. This is something that's going to protect them emotionally in their greatest time of need. So go ahead and grab your license and, and, and your checkbook. we got to get this taken care of for you. I, I'm going to go and fight for you to make sure we can get you approved. I like that. Josh is just grinning ear to ear as you were talking about that. I like that. That was really good. And again, a something closing at the very end. <laughs> exactly. So where, how long ago did you pick that up? And if it's kosher, where did you pick it up? You don't have to, you don't have to tell us if you don't want oh, to. Oh, it's a Mississippi madman, dude. Okay. I, I heard him say that somewhere. I don't even know. I mean, I've learned that we, we, we've heard, we've all heard versions of this, right? Wherever we've gone. Um, you know, again, I, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but the first version I learned of it was super pushy and, you know, uh, and it was typically selling a policy that was way overpriced and whatever, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it at that. But um, no, that's, I heard a version of that from, from Mr. Ben and then um, have actually, I mean, I've used it a few times uh, to, to where you have to level with somebody, but, in all reality, it's not going to work if you don't, if you're not like leveling eye to eye, sympathizing and empathizing with your client and putting yourself in that situation, like in a very human and broken moment where they're doing everything they can to provide for their family to, you know, put a smile on their faces on Christmas morning. And when you have, you have to take them outside of that momentary pleasure to something greater and actually more selfless. Um, and if someone, if someone is a person of nobility and honor, they'll, they'll typically roll with you. And that's an opportunity where you talk them into the bronze plan and not the silver or gold. Say, look, I'm, I want to make sure this is affordable. Let's go with this $10,000 plan for 55 a month. And I know you would want to leave more behind, but this at least covers a bare minimum. And, and we know this is going to be a lot more affordable. We'll figure the rest out down the road. I like it. I like it. We're going to go to some, a little bit of a, a closing statement here, uh, kind of wrap everything up in a nutshell, your thoughts regarding the holiday season, uh, and then we will, we will downset, how does we say? So, uh, Josh, when you're out there doing your thing, you're pretty much treating it as any other day. Um, anything you want to throw out there that we may not have touched on or add to uh, before we break here? Honestly, I think cold is pretty well – hit the nail right on the head, you know, build the need. It's an emotional sale. So, I mean, he's building the emotion too. And he's, even if you're not talking to a noble client, somebody that's, you know, really cares that much. Most people want to be better than what they are. So if you talk about them like they are better than that, they're going to want to aspire to do it anyway. Good stuff. Cole? Oh, uh, man, we need Josh on here more. This is, this is good stuff. <laughs> Uh, you know, this might be some, some motivational BS. Maybe it's coming from the heart. I don't know. But um, the, o the only thing preventing you from having your biggest month in December is you. Um, this is an opportunity, not a setback. But you have to make the choice every day to, to look at it that way. Um, yeah, plain and simple. Historically, we have had um, some of our biggest months as an organization – uh, in the November and December months. That's not fluff, just to give some good content for this episode. Uh, in all actuality, from a sales perspective, uh, we have had some of our biggest months in these past, you know, these, these two last months of the year. So if you're out there right now, regardless of who you work with, uh, don't have that preconceived notion or that misconception that, you know, this is where you start to kind of gear down. Uh, the successful ones that have been doing this for some time, like Josh said, kind of earn the right to kind of schedule things they the way they want to schedule them uh, because they've done it so well over the years. But if you're really looking to attain a certain level of success in this business, right now is not the time to start easing on the brakes. Right now is pedal to the metal. The AEP producers, you Medicare guys, you know what I'm talking about. You're pushing harder than, than anybody. Uh, but for you final expense producers, if you're looking to hit that elite level that these two guys uh, on with me now have been really at for some time now, don't slow down. This can be a great, great, great time of the year for your business. So don't slow down. And boys, appreciate you being on. Josh Boyce, you messed up. 
we're going to have to get you on more often now. So uh, get ready for it. We'll be bugging you quite often. I appreciate you, and I know Cole does for coming on with us, buddy. Yeah, thanks, um, Brad. Yep. All right. For all of those of you out there, if you have not yet followed, um, you're not subscribing, maybe somebody shared this video, maybe you saw it on LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever, go to YouTube. And uh, hit that subscribe button. We're not looking to recruit anybody. We want to pass some content along. Uh, we want to get awesome people like Josh on with Cole and I to share uh, content that helps you build your business and become successful. So hit that bell, hit that subscribe button, get notified when we put new episodes out. Gentlemen, we'll do this again very, very soon. Thanks again. Thanks.